Hi, my name is David Langton, Technical Product Manager here at Matillion. Today I'm going to show you how you can expose relatively complex ETL pipelines uh, and expose that to end users as simple API calls. So let's see how that could work. So the situation we've got here, which is slightly contrived, but hopefully it'll still serve as a useful example, is where currently my analytics users are directing their analytic queries at a read replica of my production RDS database. And what they'd like to be able to do is copy the data into Redshift with proper sort and distribution keys and run their analytics queries there. So what we're gonna set up for them is a way of them making a simple API call to put the result of a query run against our read replica into Redshift. So the first thing I'm going to do is just set up a job to do a copy of a single query and then we'll go from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is just quickly set up a job which copies one query. I'm just going to specify all the parameters manually and make sure that works and then we'll move on to the next stage. Now phase two of this plan involves us going through, picking out any parameters that we want our end users to be able to override when they make their API call, and just replace that with a job level variable. So let's, let's go through and quickly do that now. We definitely want them to be able to change the SQL query, the target table, the distribution key, and the sort key. Uh, so we'll start with those things. So let's go away and create some variables on the job. I'm going to make the default values match the values we had in the component. That's all great for those three variables, but for my sort key, because I'm allowed multiple values for that one parameter, what we're going to need there is a grid variable. Then I can change all the parameters to use those variables, and if I rerun the job, I should get exactly the same result as last time, because all the default values I've used are the same as the ones in the component. So let's just make sure that works. And that certainly looks like it's doing the same thing. Great stuff. Great, so what we need to do now is call this job a couple of times from the API and show how we can override those variables. So the very first post I'm going to do isn't even going to override anything. We'll notice that the job runs uh, and the values it's going to use for these variables are just whatever the defaults are that we built in. So you can see that's just run again the same couple of hundred thousand records. 
So let's make that a bit more interesting. Let's change the query, the target table, some of the options, uh, and, and do that all over again. So what you'll notice here is we're passing alternative values for the scalar variables. The SQL query is going to read from order lines this time. Uh, so there'll be a lot more records and the column names are different as well. So we'll put that in a different target table. The distribution key is changed. But this time for our sort columns, we're actually going to pass an array of three values to make sure that we get a compound sort key. That'll revalidate and then run the job with the new values. And already we've gone beyond the record count we had before. So the query and the new values are all passing through and being used, which is excellent. Perfect. I hope that helps. Uh, for more information, head over to matillion.com.